How's it going guys? It's Root Junkie here and in today's video we're going to be talking about Motorola devices like these and this one. Um, basically anything Motorola. We're going to be talking about how to firmware restore the device. So we're going to be using a program called RSD Lite and showing you how to identify your device, how to install drivers, how to use the program, and basically how to unbrick or firmware restore, even unroot your device. This is going to be a full video. It's going to be a little bit long, but hopefully super informative for you. Hope you enjoy it. So let's go do this. So the first thing you have to do uh, is you have to identify what device you have. So I'm going to be showing you an example here on my Moto G 3rd Gen, but maybe you don't know what device you actually own. So there's a couple things you're going to want to do to find that out. So one, if you can get the device turned on, like you can see mine is right here, then you're just going to want to go into settings right here, scroll down to about phone, and it's very important to note a bunch of different things. Well, one is your model number, which mine is just Moto G 3rd Gen your Android version, which mine is Android 6.0. Then you wanna come down here, note your system version and your build version. I would go ahead and I would write all these things down. This is gonna be very, very helpful for you um, in the long run. So we got Moto G third gen, okay? I'd write all that stuff down too. I know what mine is, but it's important to note all these different things. Along with this, this is very helpful right here too. You see it says uh, Osprey and some information there on the baseband version. Basically everything in about phone is very critical information to make sure that you get the right firmware. Okay, so if your device does not boot up, I will show you the way to find out what your device is. So to do that, let's say it's turned off and it's stuck in a boot loop. Whenever you turn it on, it just boots the boot animation and just loops and loops and loops, and you can't get it to boot fully into the system. This is how you do it. You hold your volume down and power button at the same time. So volume down first, and then power. And this will boot you into uh, bootloader mode, which you can see right here. And in bootloader mode, there's some excellent information, and I'll show it to you. So right here, you have product and variant Again, you have Osprey, and then you have this number right here, which is super important. This is XT1540, okay? That is the device that I have here. That is its actual model number. It's not the Moto G 3rd Gen. I mean, that's what it says in system, but um, in here, this is the actual identifier number. So basically, if you can't get the device to boot, come in here to bootloader mode, basically write down this stuff and start Google searching online to find out exactly what device you have. Um, different devices, most of them you can get into bootloader mode like this. Like I said, this is kind of a universal method, so this should work on any Motorola device. You can do volume down and power. We'll get you into bootloader mode. It might be called uh, AP Fast Boot Flash Mode. You can see mine is actually called that right there along the top. So in there, you should have some kind of identification numbers that you can then Google search to figure out what device you have. So I obviously know what my device is, but this is just trying to explain it. If you don't know, this is how you find out and get it going. So we're in this AP flash boot mode. This is actually how we're going to use our device to restore it. So I'm going to leave it in this mode and let's go to my computer and download what we need to restore the firmware. All right, guys, so basically to get all the software we're going to need to do these firmware restores on our different Motorola devices, we're going to come here to Android File Host. And there's some cool stuff on here. So this is a specific user, and I'll show you who it is. Um, it's this guy right here, so Motorola Firmware Team. And if you view his devices, then you're going to be able to see that this guy's got tons and tons of Android firmware on here for lots of different Motorola devices. So what you're gonna need to do is you're gonna come down here, it says utilities, and I'll give you links to these. And you're gonna wanna download, you're gonna wanna download a couple different things, but the first thing you're gonna wanna download is the RSD Lite program. Now uh, there you can see there's different versions here. You always wanna get the newest, because especially on newer, newer devices, um, only the newest works. So download this file right here. 
begin download and it'll it'll go through the download process and you'll be able to download the latest RSD light right there you can see it zip which you're gonna need to flash the firmware so hit primary download and we'll let that download we'll go back a screen and then the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to download the drivers for your specific device. So um, there's a couple ways you can do it. You can download a Motorola Device Manager EXE and that should install the drivers for either a 32-bit or a 64-bit system. Or you can download the individual drivers if you have a 32-bit Windows system or 64. Most computers nowadays are 64, so probably you're gonna need this one. That's what I need on my system. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that and hit the begin and download. Now, want to note, this does have a little time delay here of a couple seconds. Now, if you are a registered user, you will not have a time delay on Android File Host, which is really awesome. Um, I'm going to go ahead and let this just finish and download that as well. So then I'm going to go back a couple screens, back to where all of the firmware is. Now, we know that we have a Moto G 3rd Gen because we Google searched the stuff we wrote down on a piece of paper. And right here is the Moto G 2015, which is the third gen. So we're going to view files. And we're going to come down here, and we need to find out which one we have, because there is a ton of them. You can see there's all kinds of different ones in here. So basically the gist of picking out your device here is the number, XT. See, I had an XT 1540. So, okay, do I want this firmware? I don't know, you know, what, what do the rest of these things mean? So you need to figure that out. That's why you need to write down those build numbers if you can. But the best way to look at it is to go ahead and get the latest firmware you can find that's specifically for your device. So these are all XT40s, uh, 1540s. 41, I can ignore because those are not my device. All these other ones, 48, 50, you know, all these different ones. But really, I do know that my device is down here, and this is my firmware, because you saw I was on Android 6.0. This was my build number, and I just know that this is my correct firmware for my device, even though it doesn't even see This one doesn't even say XT1540. Uh, uh, it doesn't say that, or 1540. But I know that this is mine, because mine is a Retus, which is a retail U.S. device. So that's my firmware. So finding the right firmware can be kind of tricky. Um, so I would give you an example. If you're up here and you're looking through these right here, you can see that they're the exact same number, just a different brand. But I'm trying to think if I can see it, show you an example. Same numbers. So one of these is a 2 gig model, and one of them is a 1 gig model. So I think that's the difference you got right there for the RAM. So you just gotta pay attention and always grab the newest is always the best way to go. If you try to flash an old firmware, it might brick your device and you have to find the newest firmware to get it working again. But anyway, there is the firmware and I just go back and then you can select different ones as well. But there's tons of firmware on here. Definitely check it out. All right, so now that we have gone ahead and downloaded our two files, here they are right here. Um, you basically, to install these, you'd go ahead and you'd run this one, or I should say open it, and then you'd extract the file. Um, I'm going to extract mine to my desktop because that seems to be the easiest. So we'll extract that to the desktop, and then we're going to open up this one, and there it is too. We're going to extract that also to the desktop, and hit OK, and then we can just go look at my desktop because that's the easiest way to do it. So here they are right here. So here's the Motorola drivers. You basically would click on them, and it's asking me if I want to repair or remove. You won't get that, but I already have these installed. So I'm just going to cancel it, but you would just go through the setup process here to get your drivers installed. Very simple. Just run, click, 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 and finish. It's very easy. Um, and then you're going to want to go ahead, and you're going to want to run RSD Lite. And again, it asked me the same thing because I already have it installed. You can see it over here. And I'm just going to go ahead and cancel and say uh, close. So both of those, you just you extract them from your desktop, then you run them. Once they're run, they're all installed and set up. So we can open RSD Lite at this point. So I'm going to launch the utility. And uh, just set it up there for right now. And then from here, 
we're gonna go ahead and connect our device up. All right, so let's go ahead and connect up our device um, to the computer. So I've got my USB plug right here. Now you can see I'm still in the bootloader mode, which you access by holding uh, power and volume down. Well, volume down, then power. From the powered off state, it'll launch bootloader mode here. So we're gonna go ahead and plug in our cable to our computer and to our device. Now, if your drivers have not already installed, sorry, it's a little bit shaky there, um, then they will install at this point, so give them a little bit of time. And if all is working well, you can see over here that um, I have a device connected. It says fast boot in the mode, and this could vary what it says here, but it says connected. So you should see a device here along this first line on port one. That's very, very critical. Now, if it does not show up there, you can try a couple things. You can unplug the cable, plug it back in. Another thing that works many times is you scroll down and you restart the bootloader. And it'll restart in the bootloader mode and then you'll get that will show up here again in the tool. So there's a couple of different things you can try if you're having issues. Also try different cables or USB ports. Again, that might be helpful for you as well. All right, so you can see we've got the device connected. The tool RSD Lite is seeing the uh, device. So from here, we're gonna go ahead and we're going to select our file. So we're gonna click here. Now, the file that we're gonna select is the one that we downloaded to our computer, picked off of Android file host. Now I'm gonna go find mine. So mine is in my Motorola third gen files firmware. And there it is, that's my firmware. Again, yours could totally vary and this is all universal so you might have a Droid Turbo, or maybe you have a Moto G 3rd Gen, or maybe you have a Moto X Pure Edition, it doesn't matter. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And then it asks me a couple things. It asks me one, decompress and start flashing. You can do that, or you can decompress only. I'm gonna do decompress only. And what that's gonna do is that's basically just gonna extract the download, and it's going to put it into a folder so that it can do the flashing process. This is just kind of a one more safety thing in case something's wrong with the download, it won't just start flashing anything. So it's just kind of another safety measure that I like to do to make sure that we're good and we have a good download. On that note, you can also check the MD5 on Android file host to make sure that the download is good as well, comparing that to the MD5 of the file. If you don't know how to do that, I have a video on it. Definitely check it out, uh, talking about how to do that. And there's even one, I think, on Android file host. Okay, so we're all done. Now, some important things to note. You can see that it's going to be using the flash all file right there, which is going to flash all the firmware, wipe data, factory set it, totally flash everything on it, okay? You can see the software version, again, right there, which talks about Android version, the device, different information about it. Again, the model, the Osprey, um, retail US, you can see that as well. So everything is good to go at this point. We can just go ahead and click start. So there is some progress that's really important to point out right here is some different flashing progresses right here. And the thing that's gonna stick on and take the longest is all of the system chunks. There are multiples, some devices up to 12 system chunks. So that's gonna take the longest time, but you can see we're already on eight of 23 very fast. And these are gonna take a while. So I'm gonna pause kinda, of, and when the system chunks are done, flashing, we'll come back to it. All right, so those system chunks have finished. Those took about five minutes. You can see it's erasing user data here. Again, it totally right wipes the device. Um, now, a couple things that are happening here. The device is rebooting. Now, you're not gonna have a bootloader warning logo. That's because I've unlocked my bootloader. Um, unless your device is unlocked, you'll have that. That, that normally won't be there. Um, but what I want to point out is a couple of things. It says it's rebooting, but it says it's still in process, um, which is not actually true. Um, the program is still looking for the device and waiting for it to reconnect to prove that the flash was a, a success. But at this point, really, you don't need RSD Lite running anymore. It's done communicating with the device. Um, you can just unplug it at this point if you want or whatever. Now, what I want to point out is that if you had a failure, it's very important to note what it failed on, what step, to understand if you missed something or you have the wrong firmware. Sometimes I've had to edit the XML files and pull that step out. If it's like an unimportant step in the process to get it to fully flash and not fail. So um, 
just kind of be aware of those things. Also, if you get a failure, just try flashing it again. Sometimes a second flash will fix it or go ahead and maybe you got the wrong firmware and try a different one. All right, so on those notes, we're actually, I'm gonna actually close the computer. We're basically done with it. You can wait for it to tell you that the flash is complete, but it's really unnecessary. So we're gonna close out RSD Lite and it's gonna tell you a warning saying you could damage your device, blah, blah, blah. Well, it, yes, if you close it in the middle of a flash process, it would, but we're done. We're in the reboot process, it's not a big deal. Technically, at this point, like I said, you can unplug the device. It's very unimportant to have that plugged in anymore. And you can see that now it's going ahead and fully doing the reboot. And when it's done, you will have restored your firmware on your Motorola device. Like I said, this can work on pretty much any Motorola device. Um, as long as you can get the firmware, get the drivers installed, you, you know, get your RSD Lite program set up, get everything functioning on your computer, you should be able to restore the firmware on any device as long as you have the correct files. One more important note, I guess, to point out is this initial boot process here. You can see that we've already been in it for quite a bit, and uh, it takes about five minutes to fully boot up the phone because you just factory reset it. You just restored all the firmware, and it's just going to take a little bit. So now, there you go. You have now unbricked your device. You've restored your firmware. You have unrooted it if it was rooted. Um, maybe fixed it because it was having problems. Maybe you had a virus you needed to wipe off any of those issues, it is completed. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I know it was a long one, but I wanted to cover each parts of the steps of the process to make it kind of idiot proof in, in, in a way as best as I could. Uh, if you have any questions, definitely uh, comment down below and um, I'll try to answer anything I can. And that's going to wrap it up for me guys. Hope you've enjoyed this Motorola Unbrick video here, restoring the stock firmware with RSD Lite. We'll catch you guys in the next one. Root Junkie out.